everyone. So welcome back to another episode of the Hello Spring podcast. I am your host, Stephen, or Spring Sims, whichever works for you. But for today's episode, I'll be interviewing Rochella. And if you don't know who she is, she is one of my good friends who happens to be a full-time content creator on YouTube and Twitch who makes a variety of content based around The Sims, Planet Zoo, illustration, and so much more. But she also is my Twitch partner twin. And if you don't know what that means, we both got partnered on Twitch on the exact same day back in July. So we share a lovely anniversary together, but we're also very complimentary of each other because she loves the color purple and I love the color yellow and yellow and purple are complimentary colors. So frenemies, I don't really know, but she's definitely a down to earth person that you definitely want to go watch on Twitch and YouTube, but all of her links will be down below in the show notes. You can go check her out on all the socials, but let's go ahead and hop into today's episode. Well, anyway, Thank you, Shella, for being on my podcasting. Yes, actually, I'm very excited. Even though we're enemies, I'm very excited to, you know, talk to you, pick your brain and see what's what. But um, honestly, no, thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. Um, even though we're enemies, like you said, I um, I feel like this will help us get the advantage in our feud against each other. You know, we'll figure out each other's weaknesses. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I believe, I believe so. Because <laughs> honestly, you know, when enemies, you got to talk your feelings out, then you're like, OK, uh, things are not that bad. Maybe our yeah. few will, you know, be over after this. Mm. Maybe. Maybe I not. Think I think that's know. wishful thinking. I'm. Mm. <laughs> uh, oh, well. <laughs> But honestly, though, I was very nervous, like just because I talked to you and Techni like last year, like nobody else but you two about this idea. And honestly, I was like, huh, I don't know if I'm going to go through with it because I was asking you two, like, what should I have on my podcast? What should I do? And you both gave me a list of ideas and it was great. And this was before we were all partnered, too, which is wild. Oh, my gosh. Was it really? Yeah, I don't remember the exact call, but I know it was like before we all partnered. That must have been a while ago. (laughs) Yeah, I think it was maybe like April, something like that, maybe around that time. Okay, I know. That's crazy. Yeah, no, I remember that conversation and both of us were like, oh my God, yes, I think you'd be perfect for a podcast. (laughs) And I'm so glad that you did it. Here I am today, seven episodes in. Oh, I'm episode seven. Yeah. Guys, I did bookmark this episode. It's going to be the best one. Honestly, you're going to learn a lot from <laughs> Shella. She has a lot of oh, insight, yeah. a lot of knowledge. So oh. much. Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed. So like, would you like to tell the listeners a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. So I guess I'll start with like my name, right? So yeah. my name is Rochella. Don't forget there's two S's. I swear everyone always <laughs> spells my name wrong. <laughs> uh, no, it's fine. Um... This is going to be a weird name origin story. So back in high school, I used to play a lot of MMOs Mm. and I had an account that was my main account. It was like a DPS character and her name was Rashella with an A. It was like R-A-S-H. And then I made a second character because my uh, clan or whatever, I can't remember the word for it, but it was basically like my guild, I think it was. Okay. Uh, yeah. We needed a healer, so I made a healing account as well, so I could do both. Ooh. And I named that one Resplendent because Resplendent was taken. And then going forward from there, I just merged Rish or Rishella and Resplendent together and made Rishella. Oh. Um, that's literally it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because I, I thought it was going to be like your first, like your real first name, and then Shella's like. She loves the Sims and it's she makes shells a lot. I'm like, OK, <laughs> no, but I do. I do like shell challenges and it's not a coincidence. <laughs> you were born for this. <laughs> I, I was the shell challenge. That's me. No, just kidding. I didn't yes. make it, but I definitely you are love them. the shell challenge. <laughs> Rochelle a shell. <laughs> <laughs> so like I when I first stumbled across like your channel, I was like, why did she call her community goblins? I never understood that. Oh, my goodness. So (laughs) this is going to be the weirdest origin story ever. And I need you to just, you know, go with this. okay? Um, Okay. Okay. (laughs) So I did my first 12 hour stream a couple like a year. I don't even know. It was like a year or two ago. And at the end of the stream, I was kind of delirious. It was very late at night because I used to stream a lot later. So it was like 4 Mm a.m. 
And I started standing in my chair and just like screaming out like this speech, like at the end of my stream about how bad I had to poop. And I was like, why in my head? I was like, why am I telling them how bad I have to poop? This is weird, you know, because I was like more shy back then. Mm -hmm. But then I was like, you know what? Just go with it. And then someone in my chat goes, La Gablina or something like that. They just called me <laughs> La Gablina. And I was like, oh, you know what? No, I like that. I like that a lot. And so since then, I started calling people goblins because I think it's kind of cool to have something genderless because a goblin is goblin. You can't be like boy goblin, girl goblin. And my community is very inclusive. Exactly. So it's not like a it's not like a term. It's like a blanket term that can go for anyone. And also they're very imperfect. And I think it's important to embrace your imperfections. And I like to make fun of like bodily functions. I like to make fun of like, oh, I didn't shower today. So yeah, I'm not perfect. I'm not this like person on a pedestal. And just like normalize these things that people might be super insecure about. And I don't know, it's got like a deeper meaning behind it. But on the surface level, it's just this funny word that I that I use to describe my community. And everyone likes it. Like we call each other crusty, you know, <laughs> we talk about braiding our armpit hair and just like random yeah. things. It's just a lot of fun. I like it. You know, it's you. And I honestly, it's like, don't change you. I appreciate to be a goblin because I do not remember... I think it's like eight months, I'm thinking. I don't know. But yeah, yeah. I'm a goblin. I shall stand to be <laughs> a yellow, smelly goblin. Oh, no, no. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> the horde welcomes you, but maybe you have your own little cave, like off of the main cave where you can sit alone. Um, I'll just with say all I'm the rich. other yellow loving goblins. Oh, no, there's only one because I'm oh. rich. <laughs> I'm oh, the richest goblin. Are you the treasurer? You could, yes. We can make this canon right now. You could be the treasurer of the horde. I am the treasurer. So what was your like, what was your first impression of me? And I'm like, I'll give you my first impression as well. So first of all, I was like, this person is the embodiment of joy. Like you were so positive when I first interacted with you. And it was very, I don't mean this in a bad way. It was just very jarring at first because I was like, oh my God, can someone be this happy? Like, what is that? <laughs> It was like refreshing, you know, I was like, wow, yeah. this person is so nice. And then I think I like talked to you a little bit and my memory is terrible. So correct me if I'm wrong. We kind of like talked on and off a little bit um, through the front page program thing that was last year, probably around this time. Oh, and yeah. Then, and then like we, we kind of talked a little bit, but then I really got to know more and get closer to you around the Sim Spark thing. But I'm sure we'll talk about that later if you want to. Oh, yeah. I think it was around. Yeah, because I remember we were doing the front page thing for like Sims and we didn't really talk as much because I was a That's shy bean. You. Yeah. Really? I thought it was through like. Cause I thought it was through Kayla, like, like she rated or something like that. Um, I actually met Kayla through the front page program as well. Like I was kind of a oh. lurker in her streams. I didn't talk at all really. Cause I was shy, but then like, I literally met so many people through the front page program. Um, oh, so it probably was that man. And then I think she did end up rating you and I met you through that. But like, no, I met you guys at the same time. So I've known you and Kayla the, the same amount of time. Oh, wow. That is a long time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I think when I first it was probably through the front page thing, I think, or it was I was lurking in somebody's stream and they raided you. I think I have no idea. But I think when I first like interacted with you, I was a shy bean, did not know, no, did not know what to say at all. And honestly, your streams are great. I love your community. Like when I first stumbled Aww. across, I was like, I'm just going to check her out, see what she's like and, you know, what's happening. And honestly, it was very refreshing because I got to sit down and like chat with people in the chat as much as I wanted to. Because when I chat, I'm like, I don't know what to say. And I think it was just very nice to be able to have like a kind person that I could relate to who played The Sims and streamed the same thing that I did. But because like it's hard to kind of talk to people about like streaming and how you make your money from like the Internet because they just don't understand. But oh, it's, like, yeah. it's kind of it's so good. weird. But it's good to know that we can talk about this, you know? Yeah, I think it's good to to surround yourself with people. Well, at least not surround yourself, but at least know a few people who are going through similar 
things that you are so that you can validate each other. Because I suffer with like invalidating myself. I'm like, oh, should I really be feeling that way? Or am I overreacting? So to have someone to talk to and be like, no, this is a normal thing to feel. It makes me feel better. So I feel the same way. I I tend to second guess myself a lot of should I say hi? Should I not say hi? Oh my gosh, you better say hi to me. (laughs) It's like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> like, I'll say hi. But the thing is, like, I what is very nerve wracking, like all my friends, like you, Kayla, Techni and everybody else, I go into everyone's streams just to say hi. But like, I don't want people to know me. That's the thing. Like, oh, I have like the, when everyone turns and starts talking to you. Yeah, because I'm like, this is that's their stream. I don't want to like, don't interact with me. Interact with the streamer. This is. Their- I feel that way too, and I literally. <laughs> The only chat I'm able to just like randomly talk in now is Kayla's just because it's so fast that like yeah. people can't really focus on me for too mm-hmm. long. So I feel comfortable there. But most of my friends streams, I'll come in and I'll say hi, like including your stream. And then, you know, you get a bunch of highs back. So you try to like say hi to everyone, but you don't want it to be your f- you don't want to be taking the focus away from the streamer, even though the streamer might be your friend. It's still feels icky to be like please don't i just want to vibe you know like please just let me stay here and people just don't get that unless they're in our shoes so it's a big struggle because i want to show my support for my friends but at the same time i don't want to take away from them so sometimes what one thing i've been doing is i'll just dm them um on discord and i'll be like hey lurking in your stream right now didn't want to say hi in chat but i just wanted to tell you you're doing amazing and just like you know say hi be like loving the vibes today i don't know if that's weird or unnecessary but it's helped me feel a little bit more comfortable like you know letting my friends know that i'm still there even if they can't see me in the moment um Mm -hmm. it helps me feel better at least you know that's good i mean as long as you you are happy with what you're doing then you know you're good i tend to go here and there and you know vibe as much as i can like i'll say hi to maybe like two or three people and then like i'm quiet for the rest of the the entire time yeah i i notice that when you come into my streams and it's like a very normal thing um okay (laughs) no it's totally fine like i'll be like hey what's then I'll ask you how your day is going and I'm like I leave you alone because I know you probably just want to disappear into the shadows (laughs) it's like don't look at me I literally have like when it's dark I have every single blind closed I don't look at the (laughs) sunshine I hate I don't like light and that's a problem because my whole channel is all about sunshine and happiness but I'm like I don't like the outdoors whoa spring seems exposed I want to be a (laughs) sunflower (laughs) I'm I'm the uh, hidden child sunflower. So ah, oh, okay, okay, okay. I don't get enough uh, sunlight. Okay, neither do I. Um, but you know what? Sometimes it be like that, especially with uh the recent panoramic. <laughs> mm, yes. <laughs> um. So how's your 2021 going so far? Is it better than 2020? Is it you know the same, different? I would feel like. So far, overall, it has been a lot better. And I feel like, you know what, this is my year and I'm going to pick it up because last year it was a bunch of ups and downs. And I'm sure this year will be as well. But I feel like so far the energy has been great. I've been a lot more happy, like mentally. I've been a lot more healthy. Mm-hmm. I had a rough patch like a couple of weeks ago where I kind of like took a lot of steps back, but I'm recovering from that. And that's just part of life. You sometimes have to take a few steps back to catch yourself before moving forward again. So everything's going to be fine. I'm on that up slope again. So <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, that's good. You know, at least going up instead of going down. Because honestly, 2020 was oh, a lot. <laughs> I didn't like it. I was going through school and then I had the show announcement and I had to deal with that. And then I got partnered and then, well, we actually got partnered. We got partnered on the same day. Wait, we got to talk about that. We literally yeah. got partnered on the same day. It's so wild because I remember I was, or was, I was driving, I think I was going to the mill. Uh, post office or whatever but I was driving home and I parked my car in the garage I look at my phone because that's what I usually do and I look at my I look I get an email saying twitch like like the not reply at twitch whatever and I'm like 
you've been accepted to the Twitch partner program. I was like, that's fake. I open it up. That's real. <laughs> that's a real email from Twitch. And I literally yeah. screamed. I screamed in my and car. And then I saw you tweeted it, right? Yeah, so in that I, moment. I went on Twitter, I congratulated you. And then I was like, wait, if Steven got his... <laughs> then I went and I refreshed my email and mine was there too. So I wouldn't have checked unless I saw your tweet. I was like, wait. Oh my, <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. What a great, that was a great day, honestly. We're partner twins. It's the coolest thing ever. Yes. To partner twins. And I think Techni got partner like a few days afterwards or before. Yeah, it was like a week after. Yeah, it was just there meant were like to be. six people that got partnered that week from the Sims community. It was a very good week. Yeah, I think from then on, the Sims community has been thriving oh more and more God. and more. Like we everything's got, been. We got partnered. another Twitch partner yesterday. Like yeah, Ashley. Yeah, and um, Death by Flies was earlier this week as well. Oh, just like right. a bunch of people have been getting partnered, and it's just like heck yes, look at us go, <sighs> look at us thrive. We I like was... open the floodgates. We're like, let's go. <laughs> yes, the you know the Sims community is going to take over Twitch eventually. I feel oh, like yeah, we are. Sure. We're going to beat Fortnite. It's going to happen. Oh, definitely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I feel it. We're better at building. What can I say? Yes, it's quicker, easier. <laughs> it may cost a few simoleons here and there, but you know, we can always undo. Just rosebud and it. It's fine. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> at least we don't have, you know, other people trying to take us down at the same time. I don't know. Have you seen Bob? Oh, God. You never know where it could be lurking. <laughs> True. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And I want to talk about, like, you know, I don't know what it is, but I think ever since Bone Hilda, that whole thing happening a couple months ago. But anyway, um, so <laughs> the one thing, what's one thing that you hate about getting imposter syndrome? I wanted to ask you that because I'm like, I feel like we could relate to that very oh, much. I can so. totally relate to imposter syndrome. So here's the thing. I'm going to break down a little bit about how at least the Sims community works on Twitch because I feel like the Sims community is pretty tight knit. Like yeah. you kind of know your neighbors, you know who's live and you recognize people here and there. So the only way if you are listening and you are maybe looking to start streaming or you're working on building a community, the only way, I wouldn't say the only way, but one of the best ways to be successful is to network and get to know people and make genuine friends because it's so tight knit. But with that comes the question, if you're like me, you'll ask yourself, am I the one getting people to watch my stream or are people watching me because my friend recommended me? You get these questions like, is this person bringing me all my viewers? Am I bringing my viewers in? And that's something that I really struggled with because I had a lot of fantastic and amazing friends and I still do. Mm -hmm. Um, And it just it. It brought up the question of, am I doing this? Do I deserve this? Is this, is this my work? And you just ask yourself that question over and over again. Like I, I really struggled with that. And after I got partnered, I wasn't able to be happy until probably, so I got partnered at the end of July, yeah, July 23rd. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't really able to be happy until around Halloween was when I finally was like, you know what? No, I'm I'm cool. I can do this. Like, this is me. And then obviously I fluctuate here and there. I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'm doing well. But like, it's it's a terrible feeling of like, is this me? Do I deserve this? Am I just getting lucky? Do I actually have this skill? And it's it's difficult. It really is because it's hard to get past those feelings. And it it really can hurt your feelings. So like you're bullying (laughs) yourself, basically. It's it's hard. Like I've struggled with it so many times, like over the years, like I have been doing YouTube for a, nearly a decade. I'm not kidding. And I think that nice. <laughs> it's not great. Um, no, that's so cool. What the heck? I mean, I've only been doing Sims, so I feel like I've been boxing myself in. And I think because like I started when I was in high school and and then I would kind of transition. Like I had a separate channel besides this one where I made like sims 2 machinima short film videos a lot for like four years and then i transitioned to over like spring sims where it's a whole different vibe because high school me was dark and depressing and sad the entire time really Um, i only made like sad related videos i was very emo i can't see that like looking at you now that's a wild image for me like the thing is because i got bullied so much in high school and like in middle school it was just very uh 
not great. Like trigger warning, people called me anorexic and it's not great. <laughs> it was not great at all. I did not like it. Um, so like it kind of took a lot on my mental health and physical health where I wasn't feeling yeah. the best about myself. And I kind of portrayed that energy into my videos where I was working constantly a lot and making like these sad related storytelling videos. And I still love storytelling. That's and a good outlet though. It is. And I think with YouTube, it was hard because I didn't really focus on like the number aspect. I kind of focused on the content aspect until like when I got older, I realized I started like thinking of different things of, am I really growing? How's it going? I'm not feeling this anymore. And then I got into like a different side of like spring Sims, the channel. And I was comparing myself to other people or people were comparing me to other people. And it was hard because I felt like I wasn't doing enough or I wasn't like trying to make content the way people want me to make content, if that makes any sense. Yeah, you feel this like pressure of your audience to do a certain thing or project yeah. a certain way. Yeah, mm -hmm. I hate that. I hate that so much. And the, like you said, the Sims community is so like, uh, tight niched that it's hard to like step out of your comfort zone in a way when everyone's expected or like everyone is like is like used to the idea of what to expect from these people yeah so yeah but, no, you know, I feel that but yeah I learned you know I don't care it's whatever I'm not for the everyone the growth for me look at you go yes I mean I still I struggle as well yeah yeah like comparing yourself to people. I know as like towards the beginning of my career, I was very focused on the numbers and especially with the partner push, like you literally have to be focused on the numbers. It is so toxic. Like, it is. I, it destroyed my mental health because you have to like literally get so in depth with analyzing your view count and stuff like that. And it was so difficult. Like I remember getting upset if my average was lower than like my previous stream, which obviously it's going to happen. Like you're going to go up and down, but I would just be like, what did I do wrong? Everyone hates me. Just like those kind of things. And it sounds dramatic, yeah. but like in the moment, those were like my real emotions and my real feelings. And at this point, I don't know if you do the same thing, but I haven't like looked at my view count since I got partnered. Like I literally don't care. Like I, I genuinely do not care. No analytics. <laughs> well, there are, there are like for me, when I stream, I don't have the view count on at all. Like I don't know what the number is oh, until like, I end I. my yeah. stream. Because I usually get emails from stream elements telling me like, oh, or like Twitch and stream elements at the same time. But they give me like two different things. One tells me how much money I made in that stream and like how I'm doing like good wise. Like stream elements encourages or like hypes you up on like how good you do. And then with the Twitch email, it's like, mm, you did this. You're it's not like doing your good. Views dropped. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, thank you. Uh, I guess I'm going to go cry now. But I, <laughs> I think that, um, I don't really look at my analytics at all, unless it's like for a sponsored stream or I'm doing something that I want to like use as a brand kit, media kit type of thing to like yeah. understand where I'm standing. But other than that, I don't really check my that analytics makes at sense. all. But yeah, like I remember when I was partner pushing, I would check it daily and that destroys you. Oh, it does. Numbers destroy people regardless, whether you're in the streaming industry or the business or whatever it is. It's just awful. I hate it. Definitely. <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> so what or who led you down the path to like start streaming on Twitch? My fiance actually was the one who was like, I think you'd be good at this. And I was just a viewer for a long time. I just watched random streams. And then I was in college at the time. So I kind of needed a hobby because I'm an introvert and partying is not for me. So I was like, I'd rather mm -hmm. stay at home and like play video games. And maybe like my original thing was to just like play games and like talk to people about the games I played and like find people who also like the games I played. Like that was like my first kind of reason for streaming. Mm -hmm. And that still is like one of my core values. I just want to like find people who enjoy the same games I do. Obviously, it's expanded since then. But yeah. um, that was like literally what got me started. He 
he helped me with a, a little bit of initial equipment, like getting a webcam, a better microphone, um, a nicer headset, just stuff like that. So it's honestly all thanks to him for like uh, setting me up and encouraging me. <laughs> he was one of my three viewers. It was me, myself and him. Uh, he. <laughs> Literally, I, I made a second account to lurk by stream so I could get the affiliate average. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know, no shame in that at all. Shout out it's to the not, fiance. Because, like, if you have two viewers, you're up way higher than the people who have one viewer. It, like, makes a difference in the beginning. It so, really does. It really yeah. does. So I looked at your channel and um, oh I looked I looked back. Oh, and no. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I saw that your first game was, or the first thing I saw was Overwatch. Uh huh. Why that game? Uh, Overwatch is actually one of my favorite games of all time. Um, I'm a very competitive person, and mm -hmm. not to flex, but um, I was a masters on a main, so um, that's pretty. I was gonna say pog, but yeah, that was pretty pog. <laughs> um, and I was just a competitive person. However, those streams were very negative energy fueled because mm. Overwatch is a game that, you know, makes you rage a lot. So um, that's kind of why I moved on from Overwatch and when Planet Zoo came out. I was like oh. really excited for Planet Zoo because growing up, I played Zoo Tycoon. That was like my game. <gasps> I love that game. <laughs> literally zoo tycoon it my mom would have to like uh, give me 30 minutes at a time to play it because otherwise i'd play it all day um <laughs> so basically plan zoo was my ticket out of overwatch and i didn't really have a community at that time so it wasn't like a, oh my god i'm switching games and people are gonna leave it was more like a you know we got like 20 people here or there but it wasn't like this huge like deal so i was like i'm just gonna try something new and then, you know, Planet Zoo is actually kind of what kickstarted my channel and got mm -hmm. me close to partner numbers. And then from Planet Zoo, I went to Sims and the rest is history. <laughs> you know, similar games equal similar communities and more, honestly. Exactly. Like Planet Zoo is like a simulation sandbox game. And The Sims is also a sandbox simulation game. So put yeah. the two to two together. You got... The best of both worlds. Yeah, I think it's it's really important to have like a couple backup games. Like, unless you're playing as like a professional esports gamer and you literally only stream one game, I think it's fun to just switch things up here and there as a streamer. Like, you don't necessarily have to be variety. Just one day you might want to play Stardew Valley or something. You know? Yeah, I'm obsessed with Stardew Valley right now, oh, and God. <laughs> it's just a lot. Like, I probably streamed more Stardew this month than the sims well not to lie no a little mixture of both but you get the point i love that <laughs> for you honestly i've been trying to step out of my uh comfort zone of streaming because again my mentality is like i stream one different game everyone's gonna leave no one's gonna watch this at all um i was worried about that too like especially obviously i keep going back to the partner push but like during that i was like no 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 sims only oh yeah but now same. i'm like eh, whatever i'm gonna play what i want to play <laughs> Oh, yeah. I think that I think I had moments in my life of like that partner push. I'm like, OK, I'm going to stream only The Sims or like or like I because I can play The Sims one, two and four with no issues. And I'm like, OK, I can, I can just play that because it's all similar. Everyone knows what it is. But I'm like Sims four yeah. is like thriving. Like I'm going to play that constantly. But then I realized I was getting burnt out to a point where I didn't want to stream it. Because I do YouTube and Twitch at the exact same time, and they're both Sims 4 related. And if like I stream The Sims 4 for so long, I don't want to make content for The Sims 4. So it's like it's weird. So I had to like yeah, figure out something. Yeah, that makes sense though. Yeah, but I think I kind of like it was weird because way, way, way before like I wasn't thinking about partner or anything at all. Because when I first started in like 2017 or so. I just played whatever I wanted, however I wanted, how, how long I wanted. And I'm thinking to myself, where did all that confidence come from? Why is it not here now? <laughs> I need it. I need it now. Yeah, I didn't even know what partner was when I started streaming. Like I was I didn't even consider that as a thing. So I feel you. 
it's like it's so weird like looking back on my old youtube videos i'm like i had the confidence of like a five-year-old on a camera and i'm like why do i feel so insecure and like awful now then i i don't know time to, i like, think once you get you older get it's this weird. awareness whenever you get further in your career maybe because you start seeing patterns more often yeah that makes sense well have you ever felt like with started streaming or just making content in general like did you ever feel like you were playing a character not really no really oh i've kind of always been a little bit like obviously i was more shy when i started but Mm -hmm. i've always been really just like cut and dry i don't know Hmm. i just feel like if people don't like me for like my true self then they can just not be there i don't know that makes (laughs) sense (laughs) i mean honestly a little reason i ask that because i'm like i felt like that sometimes i think because i just been at different like avenues of life then i'm like am i playing a character or am i or i'm just like am i being myself because like well it's like sorry go ahead like in a way i was i was being myself but I feel like I was just being a little bit more extra where I'm not actually like that. I don't know. Well, that's fair because you kind of have to play it up a little bit. Like, obviously, you're you're an entertainer, so you kind of have to play up the theatrics of certain things. I do that. Like, I'm <laughs> way more dramatic. I would never like if I was playing The Sims by myself, I would never freak out as much as I do over like, oh, no, my Sims started a kitchen fire. I'd, if I if that was me off stream, I'd just be sitting there like deadpan, just like again. But like on stream, I'm like, oh, my God, no Sims are dying. <laughs> like you kind of have to make it more dramatic, right? Like, yeah, that's true. It makes sense. I mean, I'm as like, I think I'm pretty much the same on and off camera now than I was before. Like, I'm literally the most extraneous person you'll ever meet in real life once I get to know you. But I yeah. talk to my sim like they're real people. Like, I just want to, like, yeet them when they're not doing what they're supposed to. But, you know, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. <laughs> I feel like even if you wanted to play a character on your stream, that's totally OK, because some people do, like, create a persona mm-hmm. for, for their streams, like their stream persona. And that's, like, totally valid as well. It's whatever yeah. makes you happy and comfortable. Yeah, I don't I don't see myself. I don't know how long I could do this, though. But I'm like, could I go for like another 10 years? Like maybe, maybe not. I mean, 10 years from now, I'll be like 35. Oh, gosh, I don't want to think about oh, that. Oh, wow. You really <laughs> just threw that out there, didn't you? Oh, my gosh. Oh, I, no. I don't like that number. No, no, no. <laughs> moving on. Moving on. <laughs> anyway, so what would you say like the pros and cons of being a streamer like on Twitch? Oh, boy. Like is there a context to the pros and cons or like what would you say like is good about twitch and what would you say is like eh, kind of like not okay about twitch uh well first of all i like being my own boss um Mm -hmm. i think that's nice sometimes i'm not the nicest boss to myself but i'm learning yeah um you know twitch as a platform is pretty flawed though i think that's probably the main con there are a lot of things that twitch could do to be a little bit more of an inclusive, safe platform for like marginalized groups, especially. And I don't always agree with their responses to like things that people want actioned. Um, so as a platform, I don't always align with Twitch's decisions, if that makes sense. I'm kind of like, really, dude, did you just do that? Uh, yeah. Um, so I feel like as a platform, it has a long way to go before it becomes a place where just anyone can get on and stream and may feel like, oh yeah, I'm not going to get hate rated today for the way I look, you know, because yeah. that does happen. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen to my friends and it just makes me very sad. And as a woman, I have received, you know, the, the stereotypical, oh, you only get viewers because you're a girl and you use, you know, your girl things to, to get the viewers like, no, 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 please don't. No, no. It's like, just these terrible things and unfortunately that's just the world you know obviously the world influence but it's awful i really (laughs) honestly hate it the most i'm like why do people do what they do like i literally will never understand the it's because they're anonymous behind a keyboard yes they don't have to hold themselves accountable they can just log off 
It's not great. Anyway. Oh, sorry, I left it on a bad note. I like Twitch overall. I think it's yeah. brought me a lot of happiness in my life. There's just, you know, those things that could be better. And hopefully they'll keep working towards it. So, yeah, the more feedback we give them, the better the platform will be over time. But, yeah, yes. that's just the state of the world and, you know, how life is. And, you know, somebody got to change it at least to make it better or at least somewhat decent. Agreed. And of course, you started streaming on Twitch, but like, why did you choose Twitch over like YouTube? I've always liked the idea of interacting with people. And I think it's a lot harder to interact with your community over YouTube because it's not live. And that's really? literally it. I want to talk to people in chat. Oh, really? So, um, yeah. I mean, there is, there is a chat on YouTube for streaming. I don't I don't know if I knew about that or if that was a thing. I don't know how long that's been a thing. Oh, but okay. like for me, I was like, the only live streaming platform is Twitch. <laughs> Whenever I signed up. <laughs> uh, uh, so that's why. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. I only started to I streamed on YouTube for like maybe one or two times. And I was like, uh, uh-uh, I can't do it. All my audiences on one platform can't handle it. So I moved over to the Twitch. Yeah, <laughs> it was easier where like no one knew me. But the problem is everyone knew me. And that was like, yeah. OK, because like I well, streamed on it because like I had a YouTube channel already that was like, quote unquote, established, I guess. I don't know. Back then I had like 8000 subscribers. Dude, but, nice. But like the thing is, I it, it was weird because I already went to Sims camp. And I feel like if you go to EA Sims camp, people automatically know who you are. Like don't talk everyone. to me about Sims camp. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> <You'll> <laughs> I want to be, be a game changer so bad. I'm just waiting for them to open applications again. Ninja, uh, come on. If you're listening to this, you know, Frost, sign up. hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Um, <laughs> you know eventually you will get in i believe i hope so i hope so too you tech me and everybody else could should get in you'll be great game changers you're already changing the game you're the cow plant i am the cow plant yes me me and kayla (laughs) oh my gosh like did you ever think that you would be in a video game dude no i i like cried when i found out i was like what is this this is (laughs) They didn't ever contact me or ask me or anything. I didn't expect it at all. And there was no way I would have found out about it because I'm not a game changer. So I didn't have early access or anything. (laughs) So I would have just not known. (laughs) It's like surprise. Yeah. But Kayla, Kayla told me she like showed me on stream. I actually have the clip because it was like a changing moment of my life. I was like, wow, this is so cool. But yeah, it's so cool. So lovely. One of these days you'll be in more objects like you'll you'll be named after objects eventually. I want to be a toilet paper roll, to be honest. That's all. That's goals. It really is. Really is. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I want to be in the game so badly. (laughs) What would you be if you could be in the game? I have no idea, honestly. A gnome. Really? Oh my God. I think that'd be so good. A gnome holding a sunflower. Yes. Or a mycin figure. Oh, yeah. Like the gotchas or whatever. Yeah. Because those are all like collectibles. The simi capsules. My bad. (laughs) Oh, not those. The other ones. Oh, like the figures, the ones that yeah. stand. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, okay. I'll just be standing in your home right there. Oh boy, watching. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> um, I honestly think that you know one day it'll happen. I just you know just gotta just gotta wait for the my my right moment. I say it all the time. Like I would love to be in a video game. I would love to help build a house in a pack yeah dude if you ever get to build a house i'm gonna support the heck out of that i'm gonna be like my best friend built a house for the sims <laughs> just you wait it's gonna happen one I'll of these wait. days i'm waiting <sighs> <laughs> it'll happen tomorrow uh, oh, <laughs> so like so you started you started making content on youtube like the last time i remember i think it was like last year like around the time you got partnered i think When you start making content on YouTube, like what has that been like? Because when you're always live and then you go to like pre-recorded content, like how are like, how's your experience been like since doing that transition? Honestly, the the hardest thing is not having a chat there to hold my hand and like help me. Because the one thing about live streaming is you get to interact with chat and kind of go off of what they say their suggestions their reactions and that kind of helps you with your gameplay 
if that makes sense in a weird way chat is like a guide so to just sit there and talk to myself about my sims it's so awkward but obviously i feel like that's a thing that all youtubers struggle with at least in the beginning kind of like just talking to yourself Mm -hmm. um and it's hard for me to act like not even act but just like have genuine reactions because whenever i game by myself i'm very just like monotone if something big would have to happen for me to have an expression change like my face is just dead so it's like i have to be very conscious and force myself and i feel like i'm still learning how to do that like in a lot of my speed builds i'm like i never smile what's wrong with me (laughs) i'm sitting there like yeah this is the house i made i'm like oh my god i look so mad that's why i never have face cam on my videos ever or like my speed build I, yeah I, mm, can't do and it it's just it's difficult for me as well because i i feel not pressured but i want to at least look presentable for videos because they're going to be there forever so it's like this whole effort as um having to go through like a makeup routine and like today is my day off. I don't want to wear makeup on my day off, but like it's my day off. So I have time to record. So then I have this whole inner struggle of like, do I put on a face of makeup for a video or do I try to do my videos after my streams and then edit them on my days off? So I'm like still trying to figure out like the balance there because mm-hmm. like your girl's skin needs to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> I have days off for a reason, you know? Yeah, days off are important, honestly. Like when you have, you have to put on makeup and you have to turn on your lights and then you have to talk for like maybe five hours or so. That's a lot. It is. It takes out so much energy. Like just having the lights on and sitting there talking and having to react to everything and then raids pop in or hosts or subs or whatever it is. You got to like hype up your energy. And it's like, that's a lot of energy to like to use. And like at the end of the day, it's like, I'm tired. I'm like literally exhausted. I want to the sleep. The camera turns off and my face just drops. I'm like, oh. Oh, yeah, same. The moment I raid somebody, I I smile for a couple of minutes because I don't know when, like, the stream will end. Basically, like, it'll take a few seconds. And then, like, I'm just dead inside. Close the program completely. <laughs> turn off those lights and just be a hermit. And then. Yeah, the first thing I do is turn off my lights. They're so bright. Yeah, I don't like them. I like them, but I'm like, I don't like them in my I eyes. I hate the light. <laughs> Oh gosh. One of these days I'll have better lighting. That won't That's hurt a my eyes. Yeah, I mean I have the Elgato lights, but they're great. But this like my eyes? No. Yeah, you could probably find something better. Yeah, I'm supposed to be getting new glasses soon anyway, so I, I looked at your Twitter. I scrolled down to the beginning oh, of the year. Oh my god. Okay. Wait, no, that's not too far. Okay. Yeah, January. I thought you were gonna say the beginning of my Twitter. I was like, no, 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 (laughs) no, no, no. Oh my gosh, that would take forever. Uh, Yeah. I just went to January 1st, 2021. Um, I saw that you wanted to get into more charities. And speaking of charities, you've done quite a bit last year. You've done Color for Change, you did the Trevor Project, and then you did Hope for Haiti. Like what makes you want to do charity streams because not everybody like goes into it with the, with good intentions or like only does it for the sake of recognition or or like anything some people don't do it for good but some people do it for the good if that makes any sense like why yeah, did you choose yeah. to like do charity streams like use so your this platform is gonna, this is gonna sound really i want to say dumb but i really look up to kayla because yes her charity streams do so well and they do so much good and watching her and her example i'm like oh my god you can do so much good just by sitting here doing silly things on the sims and raising money for an amazing cause so because of her i was really inspired to do charities and also because of well first of all color for change was for a very specific uh event last year so I, I felt called to action. I was like, this is a perfect time for, for me to try this out and see what my community can do because mm-hmm. I've been wanting to. So I was like super inspired by her, super inspired by like the, the events happening in the world. And I was like, this is the perfect time. And I am blown away with all of the, the good that my community was able to 
to uh, muster for this charity. I was like, wow, this because we like smashed my goals. I was like, what even is this? It's like it's wild. really inspiring to see people come together for charities. So yeah, that, that's why. That's why I just it's it's really cool and it's really good to to use your platform, your gaming for for a good cause. Um, I never thought that I could raise money for charity while gaming, but I think I heard this phrase somewhere like gamers love raising money for charity. Like it's insane. Um, yes, I think they see I, it as like competitive thing. Like, can we beat the goal? You know, like mm -hmm. it's really cool. And I think that's like kind of it. May, it may, it's under. I understand from that. And I think it was. I think Kayla said it in her stream when she was talking to her YouTube partner manager. That yeah, saying, yeah, that's where I heard it. Yeah, gamers love charity. It's like we really do. We love mm -hmm. giving back. We love using our platform for good. And our community is like, wait, there's a goal. Let's break it. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Let's do it. And um, it just it's so wild like on how much impact it brings to that charity, like what that five dollar, that one dollar or whatever amount really means, or, like what that could do for a person. And it's so nice to see like the impact that it brings to uh, to them. Honestly, at the end of the day, I mean, use your platform for good. Use yeah. it to raise awareness for things that are very important to you or out in the world that you agree with, because personally, we, we have a platform for a reason. People chose to follow us for a reason and they stay, they, they stick around to um, see us grow and see us thrive and see what we do in the world to make the world a better place or somewhat, you know, decent. I agree. 100%. If you have a platform, yeah. use it to speak out on things you believe in for good. Yes. Cause Yes, honestly, because I I've learned over time that I stopped caring about the numbers and the followers and social media in general, where like it was coming to a point where I'm like, this is destroying my mental health, where I was always on social media, always constantly tweeting from my phone and just always on. And I just needed to step away from that. So I deleted the app off of my phone. You inspired me to delete the app and I did. And I've been so much better ever since. Yeah. It's a lot better because like when you're on your we have our phone on ourselves like 24 seven. And when you see the app, you're inclined to like go into there and type because I think the generic message on Twitter is still the same. It says what's happening, question mark. So you're inclined to say what's happening in your life. And then you just go on like a tweet rant or whatever. And it's hard to like kind of stop and then you get replies on top of replies and it's like a never ending cycle. So you gotta like step away from like that mentality to really think about the bigger picture here. Like what's really going on, you know? Mm -hmm. So no, I agree. Twitter is a scary place. I, it can it do is. a lot of good, but also it can also amplify negativity as well. So I don't it can. know. It's just a, a not I think one of the reasons why Twitter is a negative platform for the most part is the character limit, because the, sometimes things take more than 200 characters to explain. And yes. obviously you can do longer tweet threads, but it's just like limiting and it puts this un like this invisible pressure on you to try to condense a point that may need a little bit more explaining. And then it's just this whole terrible chain reaction kind of thing. It's like, oh, no, no. Yeah, I can think of one tweet, one tweet to be exact. I'm not going to say it. You probably know what it is. Um, it's not a great tweet, not a great tweet thread at all. It's Burger King UK. Not. Oh, not, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't like that, that at all. That was that. <laughs> quite spicy hmm. a little bit too hot for me <laughs> no <Yeah>. thank you <laughs> no 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 um so i wanted to ask you so do you have plans for any future charities like you have in mind that you want to do this oh, year steven oh i'm so glad you asked this i do wait are we allowed to talk about it yeah i yes, mean by the okay. time it happens it'll be out <laughs> Oh, true, true. Hi, uh, I'm from the past. Uh, but no, we're actually going to be raising money for Hope for Haiti again. Um, yeah. All of April, right? Yeah, all of April. I'm very excited, honestly, for it. My it's cat's their, excited, too. Their third annual, like they have a annual like charity event that they have. It's a, a real thing, a like hike for Haiti, where you have to um, walk in solidarity for the Haitian community because these kids and people walk up 200 flights upstairs every single day back and forth and i'm like that's a lot of um 
exercise that I don't want to do, but I'm going to do it and use my platform for good to like raise awareness for these things because people have to walk up two flights, 200 flights of stairs just to get access to clean water education and, you know, clean yeah. water. So it's it's uh, definitely a very important thing to do. And I've been inspired since like 20, 2010, since the earthquake to do something about it. And I was inclined to just definitely reach out to my friends and yeah you're like literally so cool honestly and i mean that genuinely like watching you handle this whole who for haiti thing and like the interactions with the director and everything it's just like literally so cool and i'm just over here on the sideline like yes i i believe (laughs) it's wild because i i was like i want to do something i want to be able to use my platform for good and I'm like, I'm just going to reach out to their contact yeah. room because they, they didn't have like a uh, like an email where they probably did. I just didn't see it. So I'm, I was inclined to just type in their contact form that they usually have on their website. And then I get a call from the CEO of Hope for Haiti. I'm like, who? Yeah, where? that's insane. So that happened. You're literally then. so cool, Steven. <laughs> I don't feel like I'm cool because I'm just I'm just a person. Stop. Um, <laughs> they, uh. So like now I'm an ambassador for Hope for Haiti, which is kind of cool. So cool. I know. Like they asked him, like, do you want to be an ambassador? I'm like, yeah, I, that's literally my dream. So um, it's, a, it's yeah, happening. I'm like so excited to because we got a huge group this this year. Yeah. So much think- more. Last year was kind of like the pilot run, like the test run. And mm-hmm. now we're going like all out. And I'm so excited um, yeah. to see how much money we raise. So yeah, our, our goal is $10,000. And I we think we're gonna, last year. Yeah, we raised over eleven thousand dollars in like a month. That's yeah. wild. I bet we're oh. gonna smash that goal pretty fast. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, with the amount of people on the like, team and everything, because I think what do we do? Like the first two days or so, we raised over a thousand, and I'm like, oh, I wasn't expecting that at all. Like yeah. I, I was setting a very low expectations because I never expect people to like donate or do anything so i always assume not the worst but like what i think could be you know reachable amongst Mm -hmm. all of us so not saying um not everybody's community is like you know no i know what you mean it's like never expected but always appreciated yeah that's what i'm trying to say i yeah because i'm like don't give me your money go donate to the charity i don't want you to sub give your money there no 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 Yeah, no, I I feel that. I'm just really excited. And I feel like we're going to be able to help a lot of people through the Sims community, like specifically the Sims community. And it's going to be the coolest thing ever. Yes. I'm very excited to see how this uh, pans out in the very end, because it's a whole month and they are doing some great things. Like their overall goal is to reach $200,000 by the end of the event. And they're over a hundred thousand now so Mm -hmm. so that's kind of nice so oh i bet we'll be able to help them a lot oh yes definitely um so do you like have any other like future charities you want to do this year like yeah i wanted to color sorry not color change i always get color (laughs) changed mixed up with um (laughs) with the trevor project because whenever i think of color i think of pride month isn't that silly yeah um, so yes, I want to do the Trevor Project again this month. And then I don't have anything specifically planned for the rest of the year. I'm just going to kind of like lurk in the shadows and like see what happens. Because mm-hmm. honestly, after 2020, you never know what's going to happen. Um, so true. I'm just going to hopefully be there if needed, you know? Yeah, because I I don't even know how many chairs I always do. I tend to do only like two two a month or maybe three like i have my my standard i will always do it uh saint jude no matter what and now hope for Haiti, i will do it every single year and then like a third one tends to pop up throughout the year because i feel inclined to to help and inspire and just raise awareness and because mm-hmm. i did uh i did like four or five charities i think i know there was saint jude color for change hope for haiti and then I did the Starlight Children's Foundation. I think I did another one, but I don't remember what it was. But I, because yeah. uh, I, I remember I did um, a charity back to back. Oh, and then I did the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I, I forgot about that, man. That, whew, that was a lot. Like just doing charities in general is a lot. It takes a lot out of you. Yeah. It's all for a good cause, though. <laughs> yes. 
Let my exhaustion just fade away because I'm here to help other people. Exactly. Yes. Um, so the other question I wanted to ask you is um, that you have a career legacy challenge. Oh, boy. Like, yeah. Where did, where did the idea come from? You know, I am a builder. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to I'm not going to try to sugarcoat this. I'm a builder in The Sims 4. So I wanted to challenge myself to do gameplay. But every time I did gameplay, I would only be able to do it for a couple of weeks before I would get bored of it. Um, I say this a lot on stream, but I think The Sims 4 has a great exterior. Like it's got the the foundation, but there's like nothing inside of it. You, there's no the gameplay is very limiting and there's nothing to kind of help you make your own gameplay. So you kind of have to either be super creative and super invested or you just get bored pretty easily. Mm -hmm. So I specifically am making the career legacy challenge to try to help people make their gameplay a little bit more exciting and a little bit more engaging. It's kind of like an outline that you can use for creating gameplay and like making stories and stuff like that, because I feel like it's so hard to tell a story in The Sims 4. Like, it's just very difficult compared to previous Sims games. Um so hopefully this this one will help. And I mean, I'm on generation 12 of my career legacy challenge, which is insane. That's the furthest I've ever gotten in any legacy challenge ever. Oh, my um, goodness. Yeah, it's crazy. And I'm still having a lot of fun with it. Like, I'm almost to 100 days streaming it. Like, I'm at oh, wow. 91 or something. That is a while. I don't think I've ever gotten that far in like any legacy challenge either. I mean, the most yeah. I've had was maybe like six or seven, but nothing compared to like what you're doing at all. Oh yeah. man. It's it's really fun. And it yeah, is so fun. it's it's still a work in progress. So by at the time of this recording, I'm on generation 12. So I've only written it up to generation 12. Um mm -hmm. so every time because we kind of like figure it out as we go along, my community gives me ideas. They're like, oh what if we did this? Because each generation, each career kind of has like a side quest that you can fit into your game if you think it makes sense. So for example, Educator is the 12th generation if you have all the packs. Um, mm -hmm. And the side quest, we're trying to figure it out still, but suggestions have been make an at-home classroom for your kids. If you have parenthood, maybe you could have your your parents try to help their kids with like three projects, you know, just like these weird side quests that kind of help you add on to your gameplay and give you an extra goal. But it's yeah. not necessary because I feel like in a, a lot of sim challenges, you feel very pressured to meet these goals, but they just stress you out and they don't make sense. So mm -hmm. like, for example, maybe your your 12th generation legacy sim is a really bad parent, like yeah. they're terrible it wouldn't make sense to help your kids with your projects. So we're just trying to like figure it out and it's just a lot of fun. Yeah. I think the idea is that um, what you're going with, like collaboration is key to definitely kind of go along with the career legacy challenge as time goes on. And it's, it's a really good challenge. I really like the idea because like you said, it gives people a new way to inspire themselves to play the game because every career is different and you learn a different aspect of that career as you play on with the different skills and the aspiration that might be tied to it. Yeah. It definitely helps. The one thing that makes it super good for storytelling is you have to randomize everything. So you can't make the perfect sim for the career. I can't make like my, I can't make my criminal evil, a kleptomaniac. Like I can't choose those traits. Like you have to pick from your, your offspring. You have to pick from your kids. You have to pick the one that you think makes the most sense, but all of their traits are randomized. All of their looks are randomized. You can't change any of that. Their aspiration is randomized. So it kind of forces you to make a story around it um, instead of just erasing what the game has given you and creating the perfect match. And I think that kind of helps make your Sims feel a little bit more human because I don't know about you, but I'm guilty of making Sims very good in cast, like very good qualities, very good traits. I but do that all the time. That <laughs> tends to make gameplay very shallow because your Sim is so good at everything. 
Yeah. So this this way, it forces you to kind of be like, oh, so my detective is evil. Why is my detective evil? What caused them to be evil? Are they secretly like trying to meddle with evidence? Like, are they secretly maybe trying to infiltrate the detective agency? Like, you kind of have to think of these stories. Yeah. Um, and it kind of makes it a lot more fun to play that way. Mm -hmm. It definitely is. I, I like it because it gives yourself a uh, freedom to imagine anything and everything as uh, you play exactly and that's what people need new yeah. imaginative exciting things to use to make them make their game better for them because i think like you said like over time you get bored and you want to have some like something new and that's where challenges come into play and that's how it helps a lot of people think of new ideas yeah and this challenge is a very long challenge because there's like 26 careers or something like that so you know, it can just be something you go to if you need something to do, you know, oh. <laughs> just a little back challenge. Oh, yeah. Well, like, will you ever do the well, it's not really technically a career. It's more like um, a side business, like the veterinarian thing from from cats and I, dogs. I have. I have. It's really fun. <laughs> OK, because I was like, hmm, there's a lot of careers and a lot of, like side jobs that are like careers, but not really technically categorized as careers. So I'm like, hmm. yeah. I don't know how I'm going to fit those into the career legacy challenge. I think they might be like a hard mode or an extended edition. Kind of mm -hmm. like if you get through all the careers and you still for some reason want to keep playing, <laughs> go ahead and, you know, I'll have like something written out because there is a hard mode option where like you, you have to do like all the freelance careers. You have to do all of the part time jobs. So Probably fit those in there. Okay, that's good. I like I'm that. definitely not doing the hard mode because <laughs> I don't know if I would want to. <laughs> I would struggle a lot with that, honestly. Don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to know if people wanted to get into the quote unquote this space seriously, like the gaming, live streaming, YouTube, whatever community, what should they focus on? Um, I always tell people. And this is brutal honesty. If you start Twitch to make money, you're not going to be happy. Um, unless you already have an established platform somewhere else. Um, hopefully, hopefully you understand that, like, at least in most people's experience, like money is not a thing that happens for a couple of years. Um, mm -hmm. It should be more of a passion thing. In my in my personal opinion, you should be very passionate about either, you know, like if you're a body painter or, you know, you like crocheting uh, or you're super good at Overwatch or whatever, that should be the reason why you want to stream. Um, so make sure you you always keep that like core, your, your reason for streaming. Um, and I feel like something people ask me a lot is like, what, what advice would you give someone who's starting out? And I always say, set a schedule. And that doesn't yes. necessarily mean I'm playing Sims on Thursday. I'm playing Animal Crossing on Friday. It's more like, no, you need to be consistent because people are going to be like, oh, I watched this cool streamer yesterday at 5 p.m. And then they go look for you and you're not there. And then you're on at 9 p.m. And they're like, what? Why are you on at a different time? You know, so, you know, you can have different times, but make sure it's laid out somewhere so people can see it and they can plan on when they want to come watch you. And once you have the same schedule and you start getting it in your community's head, they'll come back and they'll be like, yeah, no, I watch this girl on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. That's when I watch her. Um, because if you don't have that consistency, then people will start to look for people that are more consistent and can fit into their schedule better because humans are habitual creatures. So they kind of want to have a little bit of a, a rhythm, a pattern. So mm -hmm. make sure make sure you set a schedule. Is I think that's the biggest important tip for if you want to start streaming. Oh, I agree with you. Scheduling organization is key. Like if you want to be, if you want to take this seriously, definitely go into the minds of, you're not going to make money very quickly unless you have an established platform. Definitely have a schedule that works best for you and stay consistent with it because the more yes. consistent you are, the more success or increase of success you will see over time. Also, this might be a little bit more later in the game after you've been streaming for a while, but you should make sure to focus on victories that might not necessarily be the visual ones. So something that people tend to focus on a lot is view count and that's okay. Mm -hmm. 
But if you get upset, maybe your stream had a lower view count this evening or whatever, maybe try to find somewhere where you did better. So for example, like, oh, I had 20 less viewers today than I did yesterday. However, a couple more people joined my Discord. So that's nice. Like, you know, you, you, find, you find victories in places other than view count or like, oh, someone followed me on Twitter tonight. That's a victory because I have an, another Twitter follower or something like that. So don't like put all of your eggs in one basket on Twitch. Like if you want to become a successful streamer, you need to make sure that you kind of look over all of your platforms and judge your success based on everything and not just your view count and not just like how much money you're making on Twitch. It's like this huge overarching social media kind of network that you need yeah. to kind of focus on. Yeah, I agree with you 100 percent. It's people have to have that mindset, like I would say head on to kind of see yeah. themselves grow. Yeah, I agree. This, this yeah. is good. Yeah. Um, so, so I asked you, uh, do you like personality quiz? And you said yes. Um, I wanted to know what your results were. So I got INTJ and I've gotten this my whole life. It oh has my. never changed. Um, <laughs> not once. And it's funny because it's called the architect and I like building in the Sims. So I think I'm being called out here a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I got INFJ, like dash A, and then like the other one was dash T. And I'm like, okay, I'm an advocate. Seems all right. And then it tells me I'm a constant improvement. I'm like, is that supposed to be good or bad? Like, is it, I mean, probably a good thing, but I'm like, mm, okay, I guess so. But it tells me I'm more introverted, which I am because I don't really like interacting with people face to face i'm the same so way so i'm like uh maybe that's not for me so I'm like it makes sense that i'm an introvert it's like i'm 59 percent introverted yeah i i feel like i can be an extrovert but i need time to recharge my battery a lot you know yeah i agree with so that so i can like front as a as an extrovert for a while but then i'm like oh my god i'm just gonna go crawl in bed <laughs> uh, oh. but like one of the first sentences for intj that makes me kind of feel really bad about myself is it says it can be lonely at the top what does that mean <laughs> i don't understand Why? it says as one of the rarest personality types and one of the most capable um it's just like Okay, I feel like a narcissist all of a sudden. Like, I don't know. I I don't know. It, it makes you feel a certain way. I'm like, I, I, I don't understand. Am I like, really what does that like mean? That? <laughs> like, it tells me, like, it says advocates are the rarest personality types of all. Still, advocates leave their mark on the world. They have a deep sense of idealism and integrity, but they are ideal dreamers. So they take constant, like concrete steps to realize their goals and make a lasting impact. So I feel like in a way that makes sense. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. No, that, that does make sense. Yeah. There are times where I'm like, I feel attacked reading these because it's all so true. I don't like it. <laughs> It's like these personalities can be both the boldest of dreamers and the bitterest of pessimists. Okay. <laughs> I <Yeah>. feel called out. <laughs> <laughs> there, there was one quote that I, I love and I said it in like my last episode, episode four, I think. I'm not really sure, but I it read like the career path. It says it's better to fail while striving for something wonderful, challenging and adventurous and uncertain than to say I don't want to try because I may not succeed completely. And like that kind of goes in a way where we were talking about, like, if you want to go into like the streamer space seriously, you got to try and you have to like have um, a consistent schedule or some type of yeah. thing to keep you going, because if you give up, you don't really know what could be the, the, the outcome of it. Mm -hmm. no i agree so, with that honestly i mean i'm never taking this quiz ever again because i feel like it's just a a thing that i just know and it's it is what it is and it makes perfect sense to me and that's who i am i'm an advocate my world is private and complex okay i'm, I'm okay. done reading <laughs> oh, it, how do they know it, it really calls you out there honestly yeah it does it does and it makes sense. I don't know. It's just like, also, I feel like with some of these personality tests, it's kind of like, 
you you get your results and then you're like, oh, yeah, that's totally me. When like maybe you're just, you know, seeing it. But if you saw something else, you'd relate to that more. I don't know. Yeah. So take it with a grain of salt. Yes. Well, um, the way I end my podcast with my guests is rapid fire questions. Sometimes they're not rapid fire because I don't tend to ask questions that are very quick which I don't know. Setting a timer right now. (laughs) Okay. Five seconds. No. Um, Uh. (laughs) So the first question is, what's your favorite video game right now? Uh, Valheim. Ooh. It's the, it's the Viking game. It's so fun. Last night we fought a sea serpent. It was crazy. Ooh, that sounds fancy. Yeah. I like building in it too. (laughs) You can build. Oh my, I'm buying it. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, if you ever want to play, let me know. I, I usually play it in the evening with my mods. And I we w- can show you the way. I wonder how much it costs, though. Um, I think it's like twenty dollars. It's on oh. Steam. Oh, it's that's still easy. in early access. Like, it's not even a full game yet, and I'm literally in love with it. So the fact that more stuff is going to come to it later, I'm like, yes, 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 yes. Works for me because I can write that off on my taxes as a business expense. Oh my god! <laughs> Don't you do? I do it all the time, and they say, yeah, no, if- I do too. I just. Yep. <laughs> it's like, you know, when you're in the gaming industry, there's perks when it comes to taxes here. Yeah. Honestly. Because, you know, it's my content, right? Yeah. It's that coffee history. I drink on stream. Yeah. That goes on my taxes as well. <laughs> it's, it keeps me away, keeps me healthy and sane. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you, if you want to play, just let me know. Okay. Cool. What recommendations would you give to someone like a book, podcast, TV show, et cetera? Oh, I'm so bad at these because literally my media, con- like my media consumption is just YouTube and Twitch. Mm-hmm. Um, however, I am obsessed with Critical Role. So if you are someone you know as a D&D nerd, watch Critical Role. They stream on Twitch, YouTube, and then they have a podcast form and also upload all of their episodes to YouTube as well. So um hmm. but always start at season two don't start at season one that is my word of wisdom i will put that them in all. the show notes below honestly i will yay yeah it's it's a good um a good podcast i like it a lot oh good knowing what you know now like as a grown-up what advice would you give to your younger self grow up <laughs> literally just grow up stop caring what people think like it sounds stupid but genuinely I spent far too long being self-conscious about so many things that were out of my control just because it's what society uh, thrusts on me, especially as a woman. I'm supposed to look a certain way, dress a certain way, act a certain way, but that's just all not necessary. And you should just be yourself and you should do it for yourself, not for men or anyone Mm -hmm. else. So, you know, go off. (laughs) Be yourself. I like that. Yeah. And the last, the last question that probably won't be rapid fire. What does success mean to you? Oh, wow. I know. Um, be heavy hitter. Success? I would say if I can go to bed with just a crumb of serotonin from something I achieved earlier in the day, knowing it helps someone or I feel good about a project that I completed, you know, I think that's kind of success it doesn't have to be this like one huge thing like you've been building up to for a long time it can just be these like little moments like oh i successfully you know washed my hair today or oh i successfully made someone's day they were having a bad day because maybe they had something happening in their life and i i took their mind off of it for a bit so just these little moments it doesn't have to be this huge like i graduated college (laughs) like obviously that's a success but you know it can be small things as well Especially, yeah. especially as someone who struggles with mental health, like, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes success can be making breakfast for yourself, you know, yeah. sometimes it can be getting out of bed. <laughs> the small victories that matter. Yeah. You define your success. Exactly. So where can the listeners find you? Oh, man, I thought you'd never ask. Um <laughs> in my bed no just kidding (laughs) i'm always in bed uh no you guys can find me i'm on switch i stream every day except for thursdays and fridays at 5 p.m eastern at twitch.tv slash rochella 
and I will probably be playing the career legacy challenge unless you're, you find me on an off day, which would be very rare, but, yeah. um, I'm normally streaming the Sims. Uh, I also have a YouTube channel, which she's chugging. She's working. Um, it's a little slower than normal YouTubers, but uh, same thing. Just YouTube.com slash Rochella. If you need my other socials, they're they're linked on my Twitch. I don't want to like plug too much. <laughs> oh, no, it's fine. This is your episode. Do what okay, you well, got to do. Follow me on Twitter. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> Rochella was taken. So I'm Rochella La on Twitter. Mm. Um the Rochelle account has been inactive for like six years and I'm really mad about it. I'm like waiting to snipe the name whenever they oh, like yeah. purge it. So <laughs> I said go for um, it. Yeah. <laughs> I want uh, it so bad because it's the only social media I have that isn't my name. It's like so dumb. Mm, so yeah. Same here. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast. I really appreciate it, honestly. No, thank you. I feel so honored. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, you're literally so cool. I was like, oh, my gosh, Stephen wants me to be on his podcast. This is so cool. <laughs> well, I will see you later. Yeah, probably in the Twitch streets, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Have a good day, Stephen. Love you. You too. So I hope you all enjoyed today's episode as much as I did. I had so much fun talking to Rochella because I know for a hard stone cold fact that she is a down to earth, kind, honest person that I know you all will definitely love watching her on YouTube and Twitch. All of her links will be down below in the show notes, of course. But to give you a bit of a recap on today's episode is that we talked about our struggles as Twitch streamers, the grind never stops mentality, YouTube, why she started, you know, streaming on Twitch, why she left the quote unquote Overwatch communities as a stream more sims fully and also charity fundraising the sims 4 paranormal stuff pack because if you didn't know if you have the paranormal stuff pack there's a cow plant it'll either generate as little simsy or mini rachella and she was featured in that which is really really cool so definitely check out all of her socials down below in the show notes but that being said i hope you guys definitely enjoyed as much as i did make sure you go ahead and follow and subscribe to me on spotify apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcast and I will hear from you all next week. Bye.